Hi. So this video is a brain teaser called Bayesian Logic at the Vet. So this video is going to be a brain teaser in probability. We'll present a question, give you a chance to try to answer the question if you want to, and then derive the answer. Okay, let's get started. So you take your dog Bayes to the vet for a routine checkup. Your vet tests your dog for a disease that your dog might have, but which would not yet have presented symptoms. So one in a thousand dogs has this disease, which pops up seemingly randomly due to complex environmental factors. So the test is not perfect. It has a false positive rate of 1%. This means that of dogs which do not have the disease, 99% of them will correctly test negative, but 1% will test positive. It also has a false negative rate of 1%. So of dogs which have the disease, 99% of them will correctly test positive, but 1% of them will test negative. So the test on your dog comes back positive. The question is, what is the probability that your dog has the disease? And we'll give you a hint, it's not 99%. Okay, so if you'd like to take time to try to solve this problem, you can pause the video now. So the relevant details of the problem are here on the screen. Okay, so for those of you who paused the video, welcome back. Um, in case you're itching to check your answer, the correct answer is 99 out of 1,098, which is about 9%. So now we'll show where this answer comes from. So we know that your dog tested positive for the disease, but there are two ways that a dog could test positive. One, the dog can have the disease and the test returns a correct result. Or two, the dog does not have the disease, but the test returns an incorrect result. The question that we have to answer is this. What fraction of dogs which test positive actually have the disease? Okay, let's see what would happen if a large number of dogs like yours were tested for this disease. Let's say 1 million dogs. Here, we'll label dogs that have the disease as unhealthy and dogs that don't have the disease as healthy. We'll ignore any other health issues that they might have. Okay, so we start with 1 million dogs. Of these, 999 out of 1,000 are healthy. They don't have the disease. So that's 999,000 dogs. On the other hand, one out of 1,000 dogs has the disease. So out of our million dogs, that's 1,000 dogs. Now we administer the test. Regardless of whether the dog has the disease or does not have the disease, the result comes back with the correct answer 99% of the time and with the incorrect answer 1% of the time. So of our 999,000 healthy dogs, 99% or 989,010 of them will test negative. On the other hand, 1% of them will get a false positive. So that comes out to 9,990 healthy dogs, which test positive for the disease. On the other hand, out of our 1,000 unhealthy dogs, 99% or 990 unhealthy dogs will test positive for the disease but 1% of them will get a false negative. So that means out of our 1,000 unhealthy dogs, 10 of them will test negative for the disease. Now we're interested in the dogs that test positive for the disease. So of those, there are 9,990 healthy dogs and 990 unhealthy dogs. So out of a million tested dogs, 9,990 of them, which do not have the disease, test positive for it, and 990 which do have the disease test positive for it. So a total of 10,980 dogs test positive, but only 990 actually have the disease. So the probability that your dog has the disease is 990 out of 10,980, which is about 9%. And this result is very different from 99%. So the results of these calculations can be very non-intuitive. It's very easy to incorrectly think that if the test returns a correct result 99% of the time, then if your dog tests positive, there is a 99% chance the dog has the disease. But let's make a table to look at this a bit more. So here we show out of our 1 million dogs, how many healthy or unhealthy dogs test either positive or negative. 
So for both healthy and unhealthy dogs, the test returns a correct result 99% of the time. Let's see how that breaks down. So of the 999,000 healthy dogs, 989,010 of them correctly test negative for the disease. However, 9,990 of them incorrectly test positive for the disease. So this means of the healthy dogs, 99% of them get a correct test result. On the other hand, out of our 1,000 unhealthy dogs, 10 of them will incorrectly test negative for the disease, while 990 of them will correctly test positive for the disease. So again, 99% of the unhealthy dogs receive a correct test result. Okay, so now let's look at cases where the test comes back positive or negative. Of the dogs who received negative test results, 989,010 of them were healthy dogs that got correct negative test results, while 10 of them were unhealthy dogs that got incorrect negative test results. This means that of the dogs that tested negative, 99.999% of them got correct test results. However, of dogs that tested positive, 9,990 of them were healthy dogs that incorrectly tested positive, while 990 of them were unhealthy dogs that correctly tested positive. This means that of dogs that tested positive, only 9% of them got a correct test result. So dogs that receive a negative test result get a correct result 99.999% of the time, while dogs that get a positive result get a correct result only 9% of the time. So the fact that both healthy and unhealthy dogs get correct test results 99% of the time does not mean that dogs that get positive results or that dogs that get negative results get correct results 99% of the time. This is not due to an asymmetry in the way the test is conducted. The false positive and false negative rates are both 1%. The difference comes from the rate of the disease in the population. Before the test is conducted, it is overwhelmingly unlikely that your dog has the disease. So if we change the rate of the disease in the general dog population, these numbers will change completely. Let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. Let's keep the false positive and false negative rates at 1%, but ask what would happen if 10% of dogs had the disease. Okay, so again, we start with 1 million dogs. This time, 9 out of 10 of them, or 900,000 dogs, are healthy, while 1 out of 10, or 100,000 dogs, are unhealthy. And again, 99% of healthy or unhealthy dogs get correct test results, and 1% of them get incorrect test results. So let's just look at the dogs that get positive test results. So this time, there are 9,000 healthy dogs that test positive, and there are 99,000 unhealthy dogs that test positive. Okay, so in this latter example, 9,000 dogs which do not have the disease test positive for it, and 99,000 dogs which do have the disease test positive. So a total of 108,000 dogs test positive, and of those, 99,000 do have the disease. So the probability that a dog which tests positive has the disease is 99,000 divided by 108,000, which is about 92%. Now, we should mention that there is one case in which our intuition gets the answer right. That's the case when 50% of dogs in the general population have the disease and 50% do not. Let's take a quick look at that. So again, we start with 1 million dogs. This time, half of the dogs, or 500,000, are healthy, and half of the dogs, or 500,000, are unhealthy. Now again, 99% of dogs, whether healthy or unhealthy, get correct test results, and 1% of dogs, whether healthy or unhealthy, get incorrect test results. So now, if we want to look at just those dogs that get positive test results, there are 5,000 healthy dogs that incorrectly test positive, and there are 495,000 unhealthy dogs which correctly test positive. So in this case, 495,000 unhealthy dogs test positive, and 5,000 healthy dogs test positive. This means that a total of 500,000 dogs test positive. So if a dog tests positive, the probability that the dog has the disease is 495,000 divided by 500,000, which is in fact 
So our intuition gets the answer about right when the probabilities prior to a test being conducted of the dog having the disease and of the dog not having the disease are similar. Okay, so we've seen here that probability can present us with some non-intuitive results. The exercise that we went through here is an example of Bayesian reasoning. If you're interested, you might want to check out Bayes' theorem. And I hope you enjoyed this brain teaser.